Friday will mark the second anniversary of the Yellowstone disaster. As the UK prepares to mourn the 280 million lives lost, there are several groups around the country who believe that the North American refugees ought to be repatriated back to the US. I'm joined with Simon Abbott, a spokesperson for Britain First. Mr Abbott, please explain why your group has fought so hard to oust American refugees. Well, first off, I want to shake your wording there. I think oust is a very strong word. We aren't suggesting tipping these refugees into the sea. We're merely cognizant of the fact that Britain is facing a crisis. Now, the fallout of the Yellowstone eruption continues to play havoc with the atmosphere, and that's affecting crop yields globally. In fact, just yesterday, the Department for Food and Rural Affairs published a report stating that nationwide rationing will have to intensify through 2018. Now, it's very apparent to me that the government doesn't have enough food to feed the native British citizens, let alone the two million US migrants we've been sheltering. Okay, we're short on time, so I want to move on here. Many across the country are seeing your group as unsympathetic and in some cases extreme. Would you care to comment on this? Yeah, I absolutely would. Listen, all of our actions are the past. Isaac, be careful with those windows. We've got a dust warning issue for later. How bad? Not too serious, but I don't want dust all over the couch again. Oh, I got some milk in, by the way. Oh, isn't that 0 0.5% stuff again, is it? Well, of course it is. That's the best they can do nowadays. So, how are you feeling about, you know? It's fine. Uh, we don't have to talk about it if it makes you, you know, uncomfortable. We can if you want. <laughs> Aren't you a bleeding heart? Fuck you! Well, you've got the big interview coming up. That'll be an experience. A bad one, I expect. They'll ask me a bunch of questions like, how is it now that everyone you know is dead? Were people interested? Yeah, I guess. Have you thought about what you were gonna say? No. I think I'm gonna take a walk. You know, get it all sorted out of my head. First of all, I'd like to thank my friend Abigail for giving me a call. Are you one of them yanks? Yeah, is there a problem? Oh, fuck it. Oi! This country. Hey, you ready? Yeah. Great, take a seat and we'll get started. I want you to be as honest as possible. Is that okay? Even if you don't like what I've got to say? Even better. Everyone's seen things about refugees and how lucky they are to be here, but I want the real stuff. I want people to react viscerally to this. All right. I'm gonna start with a few simple questions, if that's okay. Like, where are you from and how old you are? Mm -hmm. I'm from Sacramento originally, uh, but I was living in Nashville when the Yellowstone crisis happened and uh, I'm, I'm 21 years old. And you were selected for the evacuation lottery? Mm. Uh, would you tell us about that, how that happened? Would you share how that came about? Uh, well, the lottery was very simple. Uh, they picked uh, five separate dates at random, uh, and the people that were born on those dates were accepted into the evacuation, so they got to uh, leave the country. Uh, and obviously most people got left behind. Um, I remember getting picked very clearly, and uh, it was... Um, it was, it was good at first, you know, because I'd gotten into my head that, you know, I was going to die. 
And then all of a sudden I got told that I was, you know, I had a chance to escape. And, you know, at first it felt amazing. You say at first, does it seem like a good thing now? Well, I realized pretty quickly that I couldn't take, you know, any family with me. So I basically left everyone that I know or knew to get smothered by a blanket of ash. I don't know if you've ever done that, but yeah, it fucking sucks. <laughs> that must have been very difficult for you. Mm -hmm. So you left everyone? Well, it's not like I had a wife and kids or anything. Uh, you know, just my mum and dad and a few friends. Um, but I didn't, I didn't tell any of my, my friends that I, I got chose for the lottery, just my mum and dad. And, um, you know, I thought they'd be, I don't know what I, they thought I thought they'd be. I thought they'd be angry or something, but they were supportive and I think they, I think they wanted me to go. Mm -hmm. So how have you been treated since you've been in the UK? Have you found it okay or have you been accepted? Have you had any bad experiences here? Yeah, plenty. Do you have a coping method for guilt and trauma? Hey. Hi. You alright? Yeah, you have a good day? It's okay. Are you writing a postcard? Uh, yeah. Who to? Or is it a girl? No. Who then? Let me see. Dear Mom and Dad. Um, I thought... Why is that your parents? My dad? Yeah, they are. Oh, I didn't realize. That I wrote postcards to my dead parents. Yeah, I don't blame you. Who'd do that, right? Oh, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. I didn't realize. I really am sorry. It's okay. Well, I'll let you get on then. Alright. Honestly, what's life been like since you've been in England? Sometimes... Sometimes I wake up and I don't quite realise where I am. And then I have the realization, and I get this, this horrible knot in my stomach. And it feels like, while I've been asleep, the whole world's just kind of fallen to shit. And then I think about it a little bit more, and I realize this is the world as it is now, and I'm, I'm alive in it. And I'm lucky to be alive because somehow I got this lucky draw. So moving forward, I guess I'm just trying to be happy and trying to enjoy what I have. Because I feel like I owe that to the people that I left behind. Thank you.